أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعض فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تتخذوا آباكم وإخوانكم أولياء إن استحبوا الكفر على الإيمان ومن يتولهم منكم فأولئك هم الظالمون قل إن كان آباؤكم وأبناؤكم وإخوانكم وأزواجكم وعشيرتكم وأموال اقترفتموها وتجارة تخشون كسادها ومساتن ترضونها أحب إليكم من الله ورسوله وجهاد في سبيله فتربصوا حتى يأتي الله بأمره والله لا يهدي القوم الفاسقين صدق الله العظيم قل Say to them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Muslims, if your fathers and your sons and your brothers and your spouses, wives for the husbands, husbands for the wives, and your relatives, washiratukum, five relations, closest, most dearest, dear. Fathers, sons, brothers, spouses, and now general relations. Three forms of wealth. Vamvalu niktaraftumuha and the riches that you have acquired and gathered. Vatiyaratun tafshauna kasadaha and the businesses or the professions about whom you remain fearful of any recessions and your dwellings which you very much like they are built very good houses villas you have decorated them furnished them you love them now if these eight things, ahabbailaikum, are more dear to you than min Allah, from Allah, wa rasoolahi, and his messenger, wa jihadin fi sabilahi, and making jihad, striving for the cause of Allah, in the path of Allah, to spread the word of Allah, to establish the deen of Allah. Fatarabbasu, then you go and wait. Till Allah brings forth His decision. Allah is not going to guide such rebellious people. One of the most profound ayat revealed in that special context. People who were not liking, you know, to invade Mecca. But you know this is a very general ayah. It asks every one of us to have a soul searching, peeping into the depths of our hearts. And let there be a balance, an imaginary, imaginary balance. And you put on one side of the balance, love for eight things, five relations, three forms of riches or belongings or property. <coughs> On the other side of the balance you put three loves, the love for Allah, the love for His Messenger, 
and the most crucial love for jihad you may say i love allah from the depth of my heart you may think and you may claim that you love muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam what's the proof the proof is but jihad in fisb now see which side of the balance goes down if these eight things are heavier than those three gore you are rejected dejected rejected if these three are heavier then glad tidings good news to you this is for each one of us most crucial allama iqbal in a very beautiful you know couplet he has grouped these things in one sentence ye maal o daulat e duniya ye rishta o paiwand gotaan e wahm o guma la ilaha illallah maal o daulat e duniya three things rishta o paiwand five fathers sons brothers spouses relatives rishta o paiwand مالت و دولت و دنیا اموال و نقطرفت و موہا و تجارت و تخشاؤنا کا سادہ و مساکن و ترباؤنا If the love for these eight is more than the love for Allah and His Messenger and the practical side of it jihad in the way of Allah فتمبسو حتی آیاتی اللہ بی عمری اللہ لا یحد القوم الفاسد Now with this ayah ends that section of this surah these 18 ayat which were revealed before the victory of makkah to prepare muslims and to remove from their minds the doubts about it the hesitation regarding this now again ayat which were revealed in zi qada of 9 along with the first six now here we start you can join with them the first six the ultimatum the ayat of the ultimatum laqad nasarakum allah fi mabatin kaseeratin wa yawma hulain o muslims don't fear that such a big ultimatum what comes what has come what has happened to muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they were munafiqeen all right they would have thought you know again they have gone crazy such a big ultimatum to all the tribes of the arabian peninsula what a big step all the tribes i have i have counted three all the tribes with whom there was no treaty they will come first the ultimatum to them was only for 40 days فَإِذَا سَلَخَ الْأَشْهُرُ رُمْ فَقْتُلُ الْمُشْرِكِينَ عَيْتُ وَجَتْهُمْ Then come those with whom there was a treaty but without any specified period of time. Four months. Those who had a treaty with a fixed time period, you complete the time. But you know, no tribe of the Arabian Peninsula left over. Challenging all of them. So there must have been some fears in the minds of some people even the sincere people even the mu'minin so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reassuring don't worry laqad nasarakum allah fi mabatin kaseera allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been help you helping you in many battlefields by yawm hunain and also on the day of hunain now this hunain was after the victory of makkah it proves that these ayat you know they are revealed after hunain is ajabatkum kasratukum when your great number elated you they were very proud you are very proud we are 12000 today there was a time when we were only 313 and we were not defeated now we are 12000 the 10000 who had gone to Mecca and 2000 more from the people who converted to Islam after the 
विक्ट्री ऑफ मक्का और दे वर स्टिल कुफार बट बिकॉज नाउ दे वर अंडर मुस्लिम दे वॉलंटियर टू गो विद मुस्लिम टू फाइट फॉर देम सो द टोटल नंबर वॉज ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड सो बिग नंबर सो दे थॉट नाउ दस नो नो डेंजर इज अजबत कुम कसरत कुम फलम तुगलियान कुम शैयन नथिंग कुड सेव यू वजाकत अले कुम लड़ दो बीमार अहबत एंड द लैंड डिस्पाइट इट्स वास्टनेस बिकेम वेरी नैरो यू सुम अवल तुम ग्रीन एंड देन यू टर्न योर बैक्स running away from the battlefield this happened at hunain some people say only 30 sahaba remained with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but you know the more dependable traditions go to about 300 but only 300 out of 12000 it was a big you know flight from the field because when they entered it a valley on both sides there were the mountain range and on the tops there were the archers sitting and the volleys you know arrows came in volleys sudden there was a panic people fled summa anzal allah sakinatahu ala rasulihi then allah subhanahu wa taala sent down calm on his messenger this is the day when the bravery of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam became apparent and you know all were running away he descended from his camel or horse whatever it was i don't know he took the alam in his own hand the standard in his own and then he said rats انا النبي لا كذب انا ابن عبد المطلب i am prophet of allah there's no doubt about it whether these 12000 stand here and protect me and support me or they all free i am the rasul of allah انا النبي لا كذب and i am the son of abdul muttalib is here standing in the street انا ابن عبد المطلب And then he called, "Ilayya ya maashar muslimin, ilayya ya ashab al badr, ilayya ya ashab al shajara. Where are you running? Oh, those those people who were with me at Badr. Oh, those people who were there at the time of the Bayat al Rizwan, ashab al shajar, shajara. Then people returned. It was actually a reflex action, a sudden, you know, volleys of arrows coming. So this was a very sort of You know, a reflex section, and then people came down. Summa anzal Allahu sakhida tahu ala rasulihi wa dal mu'minin wa anzal jinud al latrauha, and he sent down armies whom you couldn't see, the armies of the angels. Wa azab al ladin al kafaru, and he punished and chastised those who had unbelieved. Azale ka jaza un kafir, and this is the reward of the. Of those who deny or reject the true faith, summa ya tuba Allahu min baadi ala zani kamma yesha. Then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala turns with His mercy to whomsoever He likes. That is, He gives him the decision He makes to repent. So then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala accepts his repentance. Summa ya tuba Allahu min baadi zani kamma yesha. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala turns with His mercy to whomsoever He likes. That is, He gives him the decision He makes to repent. يا أيها الذين آمنوا إنما المشركون نجس فلا يقرب المسجد الحرام. This was also one of the proclamations which were made by Hazrat Ali رضي الله تعالى عنه in Mina and Arafah on that that Hajj. That now from this year on, no Muslim will be able to come here and, and do the pilgrimage. Ya yu ladin amanu in amal mushrik ula najasun. Oh, you who believe these mushriks who associate equals to Allah subhanahu wa taala, they are filthy. Fala yakrabul masjid al haram abad amihim haza. Now let them don't let them come near the sacred mosque after this year. Wa in khiftum aylatan 
And if you are fearful of poverty, because these pilgrims come, they present something to Kaaba, and they, you know, distribute charity to the people over here. Now if they are barred, you know, this, they shall become poor. Fasafa yugnikum Allahu bin fazlihi. Very soon Allah will make, will make you right, rich, will enrich you from His bounty. Insha, if he, if he so likes. In Allah alimun hakeem. Allah is all knowing, all wise. Qatilul ladina la yuminuna. Now this is the verdict about the rest of the humanity. Take away the mushrikeen of the Arabian Peninsula only of the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. About them, there was no third alternative, either embrace Islam or you'll be killed. The third was that you flee away from here. Leave the land. But for the rest, now here only the Jews and the Christians are mentioned, but this is actually for the whole of the humanity. قَاتِلُوا الَّذِينَ لَا يُمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَلَا بِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَلَا يُحَرِّمُونَ مَا حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ وَلَسُولُهُ وَلَا يَدِينُونَ دِينَ الْحَقِّ مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ حَتَّى يُعْتُوا الْجِزْيَةَ عَنْ يَدِمْ وَهُمْ سَعَوِرُونَ Fight against those, those of the people whom the books, book was given before you. But they don't actually believe in Allah. All they do profess to do it. They don't have actual belief and faith in the last day. They are not accepting as forbidden what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared as forbidden. And not only Allah but also His Messenger. And they are not obeying the deen of haq And Muhammad is sent to make the deen of Allah supreme. They are not ready to accept the supremacy of the deen of Allah. So you have to fight them. Hatta yotul jizyata wahum saaveroon. Hatta yotul jizyata yadim wahum saaveroon. Until they pay the tribute, the jizya, with their own hands, that is, with willing submission, and they become subdued. They accept the supremacy of Islamic State, the supremacy of Islamic law, and then, you know, under that, they are allowed to live as Christians or Jews. And for that matter, as Hindus, as Buddhists, or so on, whatsoever they are, they can live, if they accept the supremacy of the Islamic State. They will not be forced to accept Islam. Not that you will be killed if you don't accept Islam. This caution, you know, in religion, like Rahafid Deen, no, or on personal basis, except those people to whom Muhammad was sent directly, his birthday, khassa, that is the exception. But keeping them aside for the whole of humanity, no compulsion, no coercion, no individual would be forced to accept Islam. But the system, the political, socio-economic system, it will be shattered. If you have the force, the system will belong to Allah. But when the deen is supreme, under this deen, supremacy of Allah's deen, you can remain as Christians, as Jews, as Hindus, as Buddhists. You will get, you know, the guarantee from Islamic State of the safety of your lives, your property, your honor. You will be allowed to worship anything in any way you like. You will have your full guarantee of the personal law, marriages, etc., as you like. Law of inheritance, as you like. Your places of worship will also be protected, like mosques, rather more than the mosques. All these things will be guaranteed to you, and a tax will be taken from you. But you have to accept the supremacy of the Islamic State. That is crucial. Because, you know, in a hadith which I have referred many a times in my lectures on Khilafah, 
There is the hadith from Mirdad ibn al-Aswad رضي الله تعالى عنه Included in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal رحمه الله And according to the hadith the Prophet said لا يبقى على ظهر الأرض بيت وبر ولا مدر إلا أدخله الله كلمة الإسلام بعز عزيز وذل زليل إما يعزهم الله فيجعلهم من أهلها أو يزلهم فيدينون لها The Prophet said there will not remain even a single house made of bricks and clay or nor for that matter any tent of you know made of blankets from the hair of camel in which Allah will not make the kalima of Islam enter. Global domination of Islam is, is to come before the end of this world. No house, no tent on the whole surface of the earth. The settled civilization as well as the nomad, nomadic civilization, all covered. But this kalima of Islam will enter in the house or the tent in either of the two ways. There is the azizin wa zulle zalilin. Honoring the honorable one. If the owner of the house and the tent accepts Islam, he is honored. Islam enters in his house or tent, honoring him also. Number two, the weak should have to subdue, accept the supremacy. What does it mean? His house or tent is also governed by the law of the land. Islam has entered in his house also. But he remains, you know, a kafir. He is deprived of the honor of Islam. And then this prophet explained. What does it mean? Is there a reason? Imma yu'izzuhum. Allah will give them honor. Wa yaj'aluhum min ahliha. And he will make them the people of that kalima. They will be saying, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah. Or they will be subdued. أَوْ يُزِلُّهُمْ فَيَدِينُونَ اللَّهَا يَدِينُونَ اللَّهَا The same term which is used here, يَدِينُونَ اللَّهَا They will have to be subordinates to the deen of Allah. So this is the ayah. قَاتِلُوا الَّذِينَ لَا يُمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَلَا بِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَلَا يُحَرِّبُونَ مَا حَرَّبَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَلَا يَدِينُونَ دِينَ الْعَفْمِ مِنَ الَّذِينَ now a few things about these two groups, people of the book. وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودُ عُزَيْرُ لِبْنُ اللَّهِ So said the Jews that Uzair, Ezra, is son of Allah. وَقَالَتِ النَّسَارَ الْمَسِيحُ بْنُ اللَّهِ And the Christian said, Masih, Jesus, is the son of Allah. ذَلِكَ قَالْهُمْ بِأَفْوَاهِهِمْ This is their saying, the words that they are uttering with their mouths. These words have no meaning, no real basis. Yuzahihuna qawla al-lazina kafaru. Yuzahihuna qawla al-lazina kafaru min qabl. They are imitating the saying of those who were before them from amongst the kuffar. I told you. But you know, let me mention here. Trinity among Christianity came from Egypt. The old ancient Egyptian Trinity was God the Father. Horus as son of God, Isis as the God mother. So the Christians imitated them. God the Father, Jesus the Son of God, and Mary the God mother. That was the real Trinity. They changed it later on. Excluded Mary, Salamun Aleha, and included the Ghost, the Holy Ghost. But the original trinity was the same. And what happened to the Jews? When they remained in captivity in Iraq, for around about 100 years, captivity, Nebuchadnezzar, he invaded Jerusalem, and you know he killed about 600,000. And another 600,000 he took captives 
and took them to Babylonia. During that time in Iraq, the religion of Mithraism, that was popular. And here again, you know, the concept of son of God is present in Mithraism. So imitated, they imitated Mithraism. They got this, you know, infection from the Iraqi people during their time of captivity. The Christians took it from the Egyptians. They are just imitating the, the, the creed of those who were there from amongst the Kuffar. And I told you the same thing was done by Ismailis in India. When they started preaching in India, Ismailis, they told the Hindus, well, you believe in nine arc in incarnations of God. Just add a tenth one. Ali is the tenth incarnation. It's very easy. One believes in nine. What's the difficulty in, in, in believing in the tenth? Dasham Avatar. Dasham Avatar. He is the tenth incarnation. And just as Paul had abrogated the law, because it was difficult to say prayer, to pay zakah, oh, it's a hard task. No, no, no. Sharia is not for you. The same thing that Paul did. Abrogated Sharia. And that is why, you know, Christianity then spread like anything. You only change your creed and you become a Christian. You only believe in Jesus and all your sins, they are condoned. So it's the, it's the best bargain. Not to do anything. In the same way, the Ismailis, they abrogated Sharia. There's no Sharia for the Ismailis over there. Not for all. <coughs> the Ismailis would who dwell in the northern regions of Pakistan, <coughs> they have Sharia. They, have the, they are the original Ismailis who came from Iran very long ago. And Multan was one of the biggest centers of them. And Mahmud Ghaznavi invaded Multan many times only to finish these, you know, Bathanis who had a very strong hold in Multan. And then they fled to the mountainous regions and they took refuge over there. That is why they are found in Chitral, they are found in Gilgit, they are found in Hunza. These, you know, areas were not easily approachable on these days. They went there and they took refuge over there. But these people have Sharia with them. They have mosques. Not these people who were converted in Gujarat area and Bombay area and this area, you know. They were converted, they were given the, the Rishwa, you know. The bribery, that for you there is no Sharia. You come and believe. And you believe in only that Ali is the tenth incarnation of God. You become an Ismaili, a Muslim Ismaili Muslim. So that is the example among the, among the so-called Muslims. They have taken their rabbis and their monks as gods. Besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, Masih ibn Maryam. And they have taken Masih to be a God. وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا إِلَاهَمْ وَاحِدًا They were not ordained, but to worship only one ilah. La ilaha illah. There is no God except Him. Subhanahu amma yushrikun. And He is glorified from all that they are associating with Him. Now what does it mean? اِتَّخَذُوا أَحْبَارَهُمْ وَرُوبَانَهُمْ أَرْبَابُمْ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ A doubt might have come to your minds. They don't worship them. And the same doubt was presented by Adi ibn Hatim رضي الله تعالى عنه The son of the famous, you know, philanthropist Hatim, Hatim Atai. His son was a Christian, Adi. When he embraced Islam, once he said to the Prophet, I couldn't understand. Quran says, we, I was a Christian, and we never took them as our God. We never worshipped them. Neither the rabbis nor the monks. The Prophet said, didn't you accept them as the authority in law? Whatever they said is halal, 
you accepted halal, whatever they said haram, you accepted haram. So yes, this we were doing. This is actually the divine right that you have given them. Making law is the divine right. Tahleel o tahreem. Declaring to something to be permissible and something to be forbidden. This is divine prerogative. If you have assigned to somebody else, you have made him God. If you have taken it to upon your own self, the popular sovereignty, we can decide. You are claiming to be God. Because this is the exclusive right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So must understand this ayah. اِتَّخَذُوا أَحْبَارَهُمْ وَرُحْبَانَهُمْ أَرْبَابَ مِن دُورِ اللَّهِ وَالْمَسِيحِ عَبْنَ مَرْيَمُ وَمَا عُمِرُوا إِلَّا لَيَعْبُدُوا إِلَاهًا وَاحِدًا لَا إِلَاهِ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ عَمَّا يُشْرِكُونَ يُرِيدُنَا يُطْفِعُوا نُورَ اللَّهِ بِأَفْوَائِهِمْ وَيَعْبَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا by blowing with their mouths. Vayab Allah. Allah, it is not acceptable to Allah. Allah is not ready to accept, accept. Illa yutimma nurahu. Accept that He has to make His light complete. Walau karihal kafirun. Although the unbelievers might dislike it. Despite their dislike, Allah has to make the light of guidance complete. الْيَوْمَ أَكْمَلْتُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ وَأَتْمَنْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمْ إِسْلَامَتِينَ This is the decision. Muhammad is saying, صلى الله عليه وسلم, the advent of Muhammad, صلى الله عليه وسلم, is with this divine decision. Now, to whom this ayah refers? Number one, the Christians and the Jews. Here the mushrikeen are not mentioned. The context is, مِنَ الَّذِينَ هُتُ الْكِتَابِ اِتَّخَذُوا أَحْبَارَهُ وَرُوبَانَهُ وَرْبَابَهُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ So you have to explain with reference to the context. And this is the situation which has reached its climax now today. I was reading some leaflet that some sanctions are coming very soon on Sudan also. Encirclement of Iran that is now as fundamental of the foreign policy of the United States of America as was the containment of Russia for so long a period. Pakistan is already in their pocket now. What is happening? وَاللَّهُ مُتِمُّ نُورِهِ وَلَوْ قَرِهَ الْقَاتِرُ Trials and tribulations will come to the Muslims, especially the Middle East. Armageddon is at hand. Al-Malhamatul Uzma is going to come very soon. Biggest persecution is going to the Arabs and they deserve it. Because they were given the fazilah. They have the book in their own language. So just like the special case of the pagan Arabs of the peninsula as compared to the rest of the world, the same connection is there. And this is going to come very soon, you know. But after that, there are good tidings of the Prophet ﷺ. Tables will be turned. But this is, you know, the basic thing. يُرِيدُونَ لَيُتْفِعُوا نُورَ اللَّهِ بِأَفْوَاهِمْ يُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يُتْفِعُوا نُورَ اللَّهِ بِأَفْوَاهِمْ You know, this ayah is repeated in Surah Al-Saf. يُرِيدُونَ لَيُتْفِعُوا نُورَ اللَّهِ بِأَفْوَاهِمْ وَاللَّهُ مُتِمُّ نُورِهِ وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْكَافِرُونَ Here, only two words are different. يُرِيدُونَ أَ which is the main axis of the whole of the Qur'an, according to Shah Wariullah Dehlavi, Rahimahullah. 
عمود اف قرآن هو الذي يرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون This is the key to the understanding of the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. What was his mission? He was not a preacher alone. To bring about that total revolution and make the deen of Allah supreme, he was sent for this definite purpose. And these words are repeated in the Quran thrice. هو الذي ارسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله. Once here, it's ayah number 33 of Surah At-Tawbah. Ayah number 9 of Surah At-Tawbah, the same, exactly the same. هو الذي ارسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله. In the end of Surah Al-Fatr, the major part is the same. هو الذي ارسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله. Last but one ayah of Surah Al-Fatr, but the end is وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ شَهِيدًا Instead of وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْمُشْرِكُونَ So the same words appear in thrice in the Qur'an. And Shah Waliullah says, and I absolutely agree with him. This is the main theme of the Qur'an. Allah has sent His Messenger with two things, the book and number two. Al-Huda, the book, and number two, the Inil-Haq, the just politico-socio-economic system, the just social order, the true system of life. And what for he has sent Muhammad? The Yusirahu ala deen-i kullihi. So that he makes this deen of Allah supreme. The ayah which we read last night, قَاتِلُوهُمْ حَتَّى لَا تَكُونَ فِتْنَةٌ وَيَكُونَ الدِّينُ كُلُّهُ لِلَّهِ وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْمُشْرِكُونَ Although the mushrikun, they will resent it, they will not like it. But it's divine decree, it will happen. It happened once at the hands of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Arabian Peninsula, then extended to east and west and north to the Oxus River in the east, to the Atlantic Ocean in the west, to the Caucasian Mountains in the north. But then, you know, there was, they started a downfall. But this will happen again. There is no doubt it will happen. Maybe after the punishments come to us. And the biggest punishment is going to come as I told you to the Arabs, next stand we, the Pakistanis. Crores of us and 20 crores of the Arabs. 30 crores go to make one-fourth of the total Ummah. And why we? Because we establish a country in the name of Islam. So we deserve, and we have gone back on our words. Collectively, the whole Pakistani nation is culprit. Now, whosoever is more responsible, who is less responsible, it's a different story. But the nation is one. Nobody can say that I don't have any responsibility. We read this ayah last night. Anyhow, ya ayyuhal ladheen amanu inna kaseera min al-ahbar wa al-ruhban illa yaakuluna amwaal al-nasi bil-baatil wa yasudduna an sabi lillah. Another criticism of these people of the book. And please, before reading the ayah, listen from me the hadith. La yatiyanna ala ummati ma ta'ala bani israila hazman nal bin nal. La tattabi'unna subalan sunana man qablakum. You will follow in the footsteps of the former Ummah. The same thing will come to you. They have made their, Ya ayyuhu ladhin amanu, inna kaseera min al-ahbar wa al-rohman, la ya kuluna amwal al-nasi bil-baatil. Many among these rabbis and monks, they are eating and devouring the riches and money and wealth of the people with false means. 
they have made deen a profession. And when deen becomes profession, it's the worst profession of all. They stop people from the path of Allah. They don't let go towards the right dawah. No, no, no. Who is he? He is not an alim. He is not a certificate, certified alim. But what said of Muhammad? He is an illiterate person. Who me? The same is to be said today. Who is he? We are the authority in Deen. Come to us. Don't go. Yes, do not answer And let me quote here another hadith which sends, you know, shivering. Yushik wa in yati ala nasa zamanun. لا يبقى من الإسلام إلا اسمه ولا يبقى من القرآن إلا رسمه I fear that a time will come when there will nothing be left from Islam except its name and there will be nothing left from Quran except the script مساجدهم عامرة their mosques will be very grand crowded وَهِيَ خَرَابُ مِنَ الْهُدَىٰ Absolutely devoid of guidance. Rituals, mere rituals. وَعُلَمَاهُمْ شَرُّ النَّاسِ تَحْتَ عَدِينِ السَّمَاءِ And their ulama will be the worst people under the canopy of the sky. مِنْ عِنْدِهِمْ تَخْرُدُ الْفِتْنَةُ وَفِيهِمْ تَعُودُ From near him will come out fitna and it will return to them. Starting fitnas will be the only hobby with them. This is the ayah, this is the hadith. The same condition. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِنَّا كَسِرَ مِنَ الْأَحْبَارِ وَالرُّحْبَانِ لَا يَاكُلُنَا بَالَ النَّاسِ بِالْبَاطِنِ These things have come to your country also. Now Tavi is being sold, I told, for five dollars, ten dollars in Chicago. It's going on now. Everything has come here. All the religious prof professions, they have fully overtaken your society also. For some time, you know, these things were not here. But now, full, full-fledged clergy, full-fledged, you know, all these institutions. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِنَّ كَسِيرًا مِنَ الْأَحْبَارِ وَالرُّحْبَانِ لَا يَأْكُلُونَ أَمْوَالَ النَّاسِ بِالْبَاطِنِ وَيَسُدُّونَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ يَكْنِزُونَ الزَّهَبَ وَالْفِزَّةَ وَلَا يُنْفِقُونَهَا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ فَبَشِّرْهُمْ بِعَذَابِ الْأَلِيمِ And those who hoard gold and silver and don't spend it for the cause of Allah فَبَشِّرْهُمْ بِعَذَابِ الْأَلِيمِ so to them, O Messenger of Allah, give them the glad tidings of painful torment. This ayah it was, so to say, misunderstood by Hazrat Abu Zar radiallahu anhu. He declared keeping any coin of gold or silver is hard. But the general body of the Muslims and the scholars, they think that if you know if you have got some savings, you can have some gold, some ornaments of gold and silver and gold. But if you pay the zakah, it is not kans. Yakne zuna. These words are not applicable to it. But what's the basis of saying this? It can be said, yes, inferring generally from the principles and teachings of Qur'an 
and the legal structure of Islam, which is correct, I agree with them. But the most important point they have missed. This actually relates to the people of religion. Somebody is doing a business. Somebody is a doctor, physician, engineer. He is earning on account of what? His profession. He is dealing in something. He has a shop, grocery. He is earning on account of that shop. What are these people earning? On what account? What are they dealing with? Dealing in? They deal in religion. So if they have amassed wealth, that is a peculiar case. You can have, you require, you know, livelihood. But if you store money, if you amass wealth, while there is no source of income with you, except religion, then this is the worst thing. This, this actually relates to the Ahbar and Rohban. This ayah is one. So this actually, this, you know, warning, stern warning relates to the Ahbar and Rohban, not to the general Muslims. This relates not to the common people, but to the people who say we are only serving deen. Well, why didn't, did you then make such a big property for you? He's going to your sons and daughters and they are fighting and quarreling. You know, throughout the history, except for the last 50 years or so, no Muslim alim or scholar had any royalty, any rights reserved of any of his books. If you are charging royalty, if you are earning on that account, well, it's okay. Till your life, you need something to, subsistence you need. But now that becomes a property to be inherited by the sons and the daughters. And they will quarrel about it. What will happen? And what is happening, everybody knows. So that's the point. You know, how many books Varana Shokat Ali, Thalmi, Asaf Ali Thalmi, he wrote, no royalty. Anybody can publish, whosoever likes, publish. And thank God, this point came to my mind from the very beginning. Whatever I have written, my cassettes, audios, I don't have any royalty, no rights reserved. Nothing of this sort. As you know, Hazrat Masih has been reported to have said in his sermon, when he was sending his disciples to go and preach the word of God, you got it free. You can wait free. I never charge anything from you. You will also not charge anything from anybody. That's remember the day, imagine the day when this gold and silver will be heated up in the fire of hell. <coughs> And then with this, you know, red hot gold and red hot silver, their foreheads and their sides and their backs will be branded. This is what you hoarded for yourselves. Now taste. Taste what you had gathered for yourself and hoarded for yourself. 
ان عند کا شہور ان دا اللہ اسنا عشرہ اسنا عشرہ شہرا فی کتاب اللہ یوم خلق السماوات والنرد منها اربعت حرم ناو دس از a general you know reformation because the customs in arabia they had got wrong they had gone wrong this calendar allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in the iddat shuhur in the allah is na ashara shahran fi kitab allah with allah and in the law of allah in the book of allah the number of months of a year is 12 from the very day yawma khalaq as-samawati yawma khalaq as-samawati wal ard From the very beginning day when he created the heaven and the earth, this is the calendar. I wonder at some time, how come you know the week has seven days everywhere, the year has twelve months everywhere. This universality, you know. So it is this you know calendar that has been fixed by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. No difference in no civilization, in no culture, nowhere. Twelve months, seven days a week. Twelve months a year. In the Eighth of the Shuhur, in the Allah is not Ashara. Sharan fi kitab Allah, yawma khalaq al-samawati wal-ard minha arba'atun hurum. Out of these twelve, four are holy or sacred months. As you know, as I told in the beginning, one for Hajj al-Asghar or Umrah, Rajab. And three for the Hajj al-Akbar or Hajj, that is Zul Qada, Zul Hijja, and Muharram. Zalik al-Din al-Qayyim, fala tazlimu fihin anfusakum. This is the right Din acknowledged by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, the straight Din. And do not wrong yourselves regarding them. وَقَاتِلُ الْمُشْرِكِينَ كَافَّةً كَمَا يُقَاتِلُونَ كُمْ كَافَّةً And you fight against these mushrikeen, all of them, as they are fighting with you, all of them. No discrimination now. After this proclamation, all mushrikeen are to be taken as one entity. Although there were three categories, you know, they have been discussed beforehand in the first six ayat. But essentially, وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الْمُتَّقِينَ And know it, be it known to you, that Allah is with the God-fearing, those who have regard for Allah, who are conscious of Allah every moment. إِنَّمَا النَّسِيُّ غِيَادَةُ فِي الْكُفْرِ Now this Nasi was the invention of Quraysh. Because they were the custodians of Kaaba. They thought they have the authority to change these months. This year, this month will be sacred. They completed the four. Number they remained intact, but they could change the calendar. This is nasi. In the nasi of ziyadat and filkuf, this is an addition into disbelief. Yudallo bihi lazina kafaru, by which these peoples who have rejected the faith, who have gone astray. They have been led astray. You hilluna hu aman, wa you harimuna aama. One year they declare it as halal, and the other year they declare it the same month to be haram. Le yuati hu idda kama haram Allah, so that they complete the number of four months that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has decided. So they kept the law regarding the number, but they were changing the months. زُيِّنَ لَهُمْ سُوءُ عَمَالِهِمْ This evil deed of theirs has been made beautiful for them. They very much like, you know, the authority. We can declare it. We are the custodians of Kaaba. We can declare, no, this year, instead of Rajab, it will be, say, Shaban, will be the month for Umrah, and this will be Haram. No fighting, nothing of the sort in that month. They thought this is, you know, our prerogative, our authority. Allah is not going to guide such ungrateful people or those people who suppress the testimony of their souls within the Quran. Allah is not going to guide such ungrateful people or those people who suppress the testimony of their souls within and reject the faith within the Quran. Allah is not going to guide such ungrateful people or those people who suppress the testimony of their souls within and reject the faith 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 within and reject the fa
which has been presented to, you, to them by Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He is not going to guide them to the right path. Now, what happened in the last Hajj, Hajjat al-Bada? All these discrepancies, you know, taken together, the calendar came to the original calendar on that tenth year of Hijrah calendar. The real, you know, now the month of Zuqada was really the month of Zuqada. And if your, our, if your clock, you know, is going fast, one hour every day, after 24 days, the time will be absolutely okay. So this happened. But this was body by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why in his khutbah, the sermon of the last Hajj, the Prophet said, Istadara zamanu kahayatihi yawma khalaq Allah samawati man nawf. That all this, you know, mistakes and discrepancies taken together, but you know this calendar has taken a full round and it has come to the same correct position. The position on which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created on the first day when He created heavens and earth. Istadara zamanu kahayatihi yawma khalaq Allah samawati man nawf. With this ayah number 37, this discourse ends. Again remember, out of these 37 ayat, 18, from the 7th to 24th, they were revealed in the 8th year of Hijri calendar, before the victory of Makkah. But the first 6 ayat, and these 13 ayat, from 25th to 37th. They were revealed in the month of Zuqada, in the ninth year of the Hijri calendar, when the Hajj caravan had already left. And then, you know, because the first six were most important, they were to be proclaimed, then Hazrat Ali was sent, and he made that declaration on behalf of Muhammad, or actually, this became, you know, a sign and symbol of the perfection of the Eid. Al yawma akbaltu lakum deenakum, wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati, wa raghitu lakum al-Islam adina. The accomplishment of the al-birsat al-khasa of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The special assignment that he had to fulfill himself stood accomplished, fulfilled. That is why I told you he took the Testimony from the audience. Allah hal ballagto. And the reply was in one voice. Inna nashhadu anna kathab ballagta wa dayta wa nasahta. And there are more words also in one tradition. Inna nashhadu anna kath dayta lamana ta wa ballagta bisala ta wa nasahta umma ta wa kashafta umma ta. They bear testimony. And then he said. فَلْيُبَلِّغِ شَاهِدُ الْغَائِبَةِ Now it's your duty, duty of those who are present here, to convey to those who are not present here. That was the second aspect, which he had initiated already after the Treaty of Hudabiyya, by sending his letters of invitation to Islam. And you know that has culminated in the Battle of Mawta'ir, the, the journey to Tabuk, and that will be discussed in the coming ayat, inshallah. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بالآيات الذكي الحكيم الله أكبر الله أكبر The Islamic Organization of North America, Iona, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. 
The first and foremost objective of establishing IONA is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations, first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about IONA, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at t-a-n-z-e-e-m dot u-s or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.